Hi, it's Dr. Eric Ballcavage, and we're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. Today, I want to talk about the connection between hypothyroidism and elevated cholesterol and LDL and triglycerides. So before I get started on how TSH impacts cholesterol physiology or impacts cholesterol and lipid levels, let me just give you a simple explanation of kind of how this whole process works. First of all, when you eat food, food is converted into glucose in your bloodstream. Glucose is then converted into something called pyruvate. Pyruvate is then converted into something called acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA enters into something called your Krebs cycle, which is how we actually generate energy. So when you exercise and just your daily metabolism, as long as you're in an aerobic state, then this is what happens to glucose. But if you don't exercise a, a, a lot, if you're exercising excessively and you're in a chronic anaerobic state, um, instead of acetyl-CoA going into Krebs cycle, one of the things that can happen is acetyl-CoA can actually spill over and start to make more of this. And this is 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutarol-CoA. We call it HMG-CoA. And the reason this is important is because HMG-CoA is what is used to make cholesterol. So if you're consuming lots of glucose, you're not able to use that glucose, the acetyl-CoA can spill over, and it goes through a natural process of making CoQ10, cholesterol, and a whole bunch of different hormones. Now, how does TSH or hypothyroidism impact this? Well, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, in a hypothyroid state, TSH levels go up. So as TSH levels go up, TSH can do a few things. We said it does generate more T4, T3. So it goes to the liver uh, or it goes to the thyroid gland and, and stimulates the production of T4 and T3. But if there's problems with the thyroid physiology, if there's Hashimoto's and you can't generate enough T4, T3, then TSH levels may stay elevated. And when they do, TSH along with stimulating T4 and T3 actually increases this enzyme HM. HMG CoA reductase, it speeds it up or it increases it. And when we increase HMG CoA reductase, it actually increases something called mevalonic acid. And as it, when it increases mevalonic acid, then we get increased CoQ10, which is a good thing. The other thing we get is cholesterol. And again, that could be a really good thing because cholesterol is used to make pregnenolone, progesterone, cortisol, aldosterone, DHEA, estradiol, which is essentially estrogens testosterone, and bile to help absorb fats. And so if we have chronically elevated TSH, we're going to wind up with potentially elevated cholesterol, elevated lipids. And so in a medical model, traditionally what happens is somebody goes to their doctor and they get evaluated for high cholesterol. Many times their TSH is never looked at. So a doctor doesn't realize that potentially the reason they have this elevated cholesterol level is because they have hypothyroidism. Their TSH is chronically high, so this enzyme is sped up, so they get more cholesterol production. So the doctor may put you on a statin, and if the doctor puts you on a statin, the statin actually prevents HMG-CoA being converted into mevalonic acid, so your cholesterol levels drop. And a lot of people think that's a good thing. Well, it may be good that the number's within range, but it's not necessarily good for your physiology because the cholesterol then can't make pregnenolone. It can't make progesterone. It can't make cortisol or aldosterone or DHEA or estrogen or testosterone or bile salts to help absorb fats from our diet or fat-soluble vitamins or make bile that actually helps keep the small intestine clean to prevent SIBO or small intestinal bowel overgrowth. So in a process of decreasing cholesterol production, we, we think the game is won. Okay, my cholesterol is normal, but your cholesterol is only normal because you blocked this pathway. You didn't have your hypothyroidism addressed. And in a state of hypothyroidism where TSH is elevated, there's still insulin resistance being stimulated. There's still inflammation occurring and there's still vasodilation or reduction of vasodilation. So this person is going to have increased blood pressure. They're going to have increased vessel damage. They're gonna develop 
diabetes as a result of somebody not evaluating whether they have TSH. So hypothyroidism can definitely stimulate an increase in your lipids. Taking a statin does not fix the problem. All it does is actually mask the problem and actually creates a bigger issue because there's a false sense by the patient and the doctor that the condition's under control. Yet as long as the TSH is elevated, you're going to have more insulin resistance, which is gonna keep feeding this pathway. You're gonna have increased chronic inflammation, which is going to, again, keep feeding this pathway. And you're gonna have decreased vasodilation, so decreased circulation, and that's a recipe for increased blood pressure, increased vessel damage, increased cardiovascular damage and risk, and a perfect route to diabetes. So I hope this Thyroid Thursday video helps you. If you have hypothyroidism, you want to make sure that you address the underlying cause. If you have high, if you have high cholesterol levels, the solution is not a statin. The solution is to address the underlying cause. Elevated TSH is one of those causes. Statin medications do inhibit this enzyme. It prevents it from working. But in an effort to make your cholesterol numbers look nice for the labs, you actually prevent your body's chemistry from doing all the important things it needs to do with cholesterol. You can't make healthy cell membranes. You can't make adrenal hormones. You can't make sex hormones. You can't make bile salts. You wind up with chronic SIBO and, and bowel infections and dysbiosis. So again, I hope this one helps. Uh, look forward to another Thyroid Thursday next week. If you have any questions, put them in the comment area below the video. All right, thank you.